Hello and welcome to Momo Arts TV, a fresh and informative look at key personalities who have made waves in their work. Artists, filmmakers, musicians, actors, CEOs, the ordinary Monanchi and many more. We will also feature key spaces that are pockets of pride for our country Kenya. These are but a taste of what you'll see on our show. Sit back and enjoy. Yeah, so if you look at the universities, when how people used to look at you when you're from the village, you're going to a university, when you're from Madari, you're going to a university, vis-a-vis -vis when you're from the village and you're going to a polytechnic. We even have village polytechnics. Yes. Yeah. So I think if we can make our our polytechnics as beautiful as as attractive as we make our universities, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of people joining, you know, uh, TVETs, not because they failed, but yes. because I got an A, yeah. but I want to build houses. I exactly. want to, yeah, I want because an if, electrician, electrician, yeah. If you go to the US, if you go to Canada, a lot of handworks, uh, people who are building houses, they're doing well, they're, doing well. Yeah. they're pretty making, they're making very good exactly. money, exactly, yeah. yeah. But if you look here, uh, if you are doing electrician, if you are building houses, it's 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 not lucrative. Yes. So. But it doesn't have to be because you know what I'm thinking is this: eh? look at the demographic that claims not to be having jobs. Most of I'm not I'm not kind of uh, giving specific examples. I'm looking at it at a broad perspective. Mm -hmm. Most people who have not got tertiary education be it university or polytechnics, mm. lack skills. So yes. if we reduce it to skills, it, we now start having a good conversation because mm. if, even that Mjengo guy, he mm. knows masonry, mm. right? Mm. Or, he, or the guy who is doing carpentry. At least a konayo pesa anamek. Ata tuseme si kama ya CEO, he has a livelihood. Yeah, yeah. But someone who is not skilled has nothing. Yeah. He's waiting at home yeah. to get a scholarship she, or yeah. a bursary to pursue a course. Uh -huh. Lazma andikwe ndio apate pesa. But the, here's the thing. If I learn like let me give you a real example. I have a cousin who has learned how to be a plumber, mm -hmm. plumbing. Mm -hmm. He can employ himself. Mm -hmm. And more people. Haizi haizi tembe hapa nje for more than 1 hour kuna mtu anahitaji plumber. Mm -hmm. True. He will not miss an opportunity. And compare him to someone who has done, let's say, no offense to the industry, no offense to the discipline, psychology. To be a practicing psychologist, mm -hmm. you need to be employed. Mm -hmm. Or political science. Or political science, you need to be employed. You can't work in the Kijiji as a political Good scientist sense. selling yeah. your services. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So at the end of the day, I think that is why I am so particular about blue collar. Because you will not have these hordes and hundreds of thousands of youth waiting to be kuandikwa. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, not everyone can be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. True. You can't say everyone ends up mm -hmm. But even if I'm not an entrepreneur and have skills, mm -hmm. even I if can... it's being a makeup artist, yeah. I can sell it directly to the market yeah. without being under the banner of an em employment. And do you think that can be introduced at the grassroots level? I think, yeah, you know when, uh, I think you guys did uh, art, craft and music, yes, home science yes, and home science. business. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it, it started preparing you for, for other things. Mm. Yeah, you'd see people knitting, you'd see people, you know, make, even within, when you're still young, you are, you are able to look at things differently. But yes. right now, things are super, at, uh, there was uh, the agriculture, even farming. People na nowadays, sure. young people, yeah, sure. they don't want, yeah. they don't want to go to farms mm. because they feel it's it's dirty. It is people will look down on you or something. Yeah. Yeah. But we need to start changing that mindset. If it yeah. starts from you know from the CBC level, yes. then you can see the advantages of farming. You can see how people you know you get examples of how people have made it out of. You know, just being a farmer, yes. going through school but focusing on farming, yes. going through school and being an artist. Mm. So we just need to, you know, open up the space. Okay. It used to, it 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 narrowed down to specific uh, white collar. You want to be like uh, 
nowadays wanasema wanataka kuwa MCA everybody wants yeah, to be an yes, MCA yes. yeah but if we open it up <coughs> make a uh, farming lucrative make people look at farming differently yes uh, i think through technologies and all that you don't need farming you know i'm a farmer yes and uh, the number of times that i've gone to farm actually yes. i can't even remember yes yeah but I, I i i i have dairy cows i have my fish i have my different things that i i mm. do in the in the village it's a whole management program yes. you yes. need to learn how to be a manager you need to learn how to deal with resources you need to learn how to deal with people, people yeah. so that it is a clockwork it's working on its own yeah so that's where that's what we lack so i feel for us to be able to have 2 million even 1 million jobs a year yes it should not just be talking about university let's go to university let's open up these tertiary centers yes and they can, and they don't even have to be th- those big, big buildings one. we are thinking yeah. it could be kind of tot learning training training of trainers at a community level. level yeah i see in my village there's a there's a community polytechnic mm. so a lot of guys from the but it, it still looked looks like a home for the failures so but you see the masons the the guys who are doing uh, electricians all of them are now going through that that okay. that system but at least it, it 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 is helping yeah and you see at the end of the day if you think about it even if you see someone as a failure and he's making money, money it yeah. will be your perception yeah. because they know they are making money but you know money. the the people that are now struggling more the people that are putting too much pressure into the to the government and the job market yes. are the people who graduated are expecting for Exactly yes. and so that's we need we need exactly. to, to see how we can reduce that. Yes. And directing more of them also into these uh technical spaces. Yes, but you, you see it's a waste already. You see for example and this is now going to make me uh, um, we'll move into the next question which is about um, social action. What you are saying these people who are vocal about unemployment being a crisis are people who went through the tertiary education so called white collar mm-hmm. jobs. Or rather, they want to get those jobs and they are jobless. Why? It's because they need to be employed to work. Yeah. But the guy who has gone to Kenya Poly, for example, or Mombasa Poly Technical, now it's called Technical University, mm. he doesn't need to be employed. Yeah. He can start fixing sinks and taps and showers in the wherever he is. Mm. The the electrician, the person who is doing. Um, farming and as enda kupanda viazi directly you mm. don't need to be hired mm. so the thing is this the demographic of disgruntled youth that are unemployed are those who went through the mainstream education system for white collar jobs yes. and they need to be employed right. to work yeah. and it's because they can't employ themselves mm. because to to work they need to be employed right. by an institution yeah they end up contributing to the increased un- unemployment yes and now moving into the next question about the recent car- the current affairs in the country with the maandamano mm. if you look at this is my perspective also being a kenyan being kwagrao mm. if you look at the gen z thing i think and i'm, I'm yet to see this analysis by any political analyst i i i think the fundamental aspect here is unemployment yes yes i'm not saying that there are no other issues i'm not saying there is no issue of all those issues they were saying the president yeah, needs the to address accountability, the accountability the corruption fine fine yeah. fine fine but yeah. let me tell you something if you're you already, all, if you're all doing well and employed and, they would not even exactly, care about what you're doing no one things. is saying that and and no one says <coughs> that and no one on these political analyst panels no one says if you have something to lose you are less likely to complain mm. so give people something to lose mm. and what is the most basic thing you can give someone to lose is a livelihood and the mm. most basic form of livelihood is employment, employment. Yeah. job kazi yeah so even when the president came on the that interview with some journalists none of those journalists and i was very disappointed on that very fact asked him they didn't hammer in on the issue of unemployment because i think if if people are working you there's a difference there'll be a difference i strongly believe if you had that demographic who was in town protesting if you if you know if i do, if i go to protest i'm not saying protest is wrong but if you know if i go to protest i will it means skipping work mm. 
you have something to lose. lose yeah. But these people don't have anything to lose. Exactly. So, in my view, all these other things, ni makelele, the issue is... is there unemployment? One, we are many young people in this country. Mm. Two, they don't have jobs. Yeah. So what is your view on Mandamano and the activism behind it? First, first of all, let me say this. Yeah. You know, if you look at uh, the history of voting in Kenya yeah. and just nailing what you've been talking about, mm. uh, you'll find out f that the middle class for the longest have not been voting. Mm. Why? Mm. Because they are employed, they are okay. They're in a well, comfort zone. They're in a comfort zone. Yeah. So when the Gen Z happened, it's because... These people didn't have anything to do. They didn't Mau Mau Arts has run an annual monologue competition since the year 2021 and we look forward to hosting the fourth edition this year, 2024. Each year, the challenge gets more competitive, yet more rewarding as we crank up the prizes. I draw, I do digital art, and I'm happy now that I'm able to showcase more of myself in other artistic expressions like acting. The question is, have you been part of our work? If not, you could simply send us an email or inbox stating how you wish to get involved with Mau Mau Art. They, there's, there's no hope and then they're seeing the leaders <coughs> moving around with big cars mm. and then they're seeing corruption cases. That's when we started following all these corruption cases. Yes. Corruption has been there for the longest. Mm. Whatever has been happening has been there for the longest. Mm. The middle class have never been interested in politics because it never affected them directly. Yeah. In fact, they had something to lose if they got too much into it. Yes. But when now we had taxes and now we're cutting into now the middle class, that's when they felt like, oh, yo, these guys are coming for us. Yeah, but even those taxes, if you think about it, let me not sound like the devil's advocate. <laughs> How can you be taxed if you're not earning income? Yeah. I know, yes, you can say VAT, you can say other things, you're <laughs> buying products and everything. But you, you see what I'm getting at? Yeah. At the end of the day, who is really complaining about tax? And the people complaining about tax, is it tax they are complaining about or is it the fact that they cannot afford the standard of living that they wish to have? Exactly. Because how can I complain about uh, statutory deduction? Yeah, yeah. No, I think there, was, there are two things that were here. One, there was the Gen Z, the people who you know, went through the system, they, they've been walking into the offices, sending emails, dropping their Tama CVs, stomaching, trying yeah. to get a job, and it's not working. Yes. And then there are those people whom have had this uh, type of lifestyle. Uh, they can go to work, come home, today is Friday, they can chill with the boys, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm. They're now, barely making it. Yes. yes. So now the government was coming. They felt now the taxes was going to limit the type of lifestyle that they've been living. It would reduce it. Yes. yes. So it was a combination of the two, the two. The two parties. Yes. And, and these two, if you look at most young people last election, most young people did not vote. Mm. And most middle class did not vote. Mm. Yeah. Every, people were campaigning in Madare, in Kibera, in Korogocho. Mm. You barely saw guys com uh, campaigning in, in Lovington and Kileleshwa yes. and all those areas. And it has never happened, as you said, from time immemorial, you mm. would never see politicians doing that. Yeah. yeah. Why? Because they have nothing, them, they are okay, they are comfortable. Mm. Until now, when this happened, yeah. if you look at the people of Madari came to the streets, mm. yes. Mm. But if you look at where there was too much noise, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm not, I know my people are suffering mm. because a lot of people from Madari, so I don't want to look like I am okay, so yeah. I'm trying to bash the whole thing that yeah. happened. Yeah. I, am, I am of support of uh, the Gen Z movement yes. for reasons, one, 
-hmm. because it was a wake up call for everybody, yes. all the leaders, all yes. of us have been taking even things, Kenyans and, and themselves. even Kenyans, yes. taking things for granted, mm. taking politics and elections for granted. Mm. And for once, I felt this was a wake up call for us to see politics affects all of us. Yeah. I went to a cafe in the CBD, and one of the waitresses told me something which I wasn't surprised about, but I was kind of shocked it's still happening because I've been in the private sector that was dealing with social action before, and I know how activists organize. Yeah. I'm actually very aware about community organizing and how it can be used beneficially for everybody. Mm -hmm. And the waitress tells me, Unajua watu wanakujanga hapa, niliona mmoja ametoa pesa kwa mfuko, a bando, a word of cash. Mm -hmm. And then he, she noticed that I was surprised that I removed a word of cash from mm -hmm. my pocket. Mm -hmm. And she preempted my question, although I didn't ask. Not me, now the waitress is telling me. I, ah, ninajua unafikiria hii pesa yote ni anini ni bail money. <laughs> and that made me realize these people, uh, the way they, you've read the book Animal Farm. Yes. Chambala Wanyama. Yeah. There's a part that says the someone changes the rules and says not all no some animal first it was all animals are equal yeah then someone the next morning akaifuta akaandika some animals are more equal, equal than, than others. others yeah and if that's the case in this country <coughs> some activists are more equal than others mwenye mm ametoa -hmm. pesa mingi a word of cash in a rubber band is not equal to the guy from madhare who mm -hmm. is genuinely pissed off that He's not getting work. I met him back to Kamadari and Paka CBD. I met Rauki Akwenda protest peacefully. Mm. He's not the same. Mukichapwa na police. Who you? Akona NGO flani imem sponsor. Mm. And that begs the question I asked earlier about NGOs. I'm all for NGOs, but where do we draw the line between foreign support and foreign interference? Because as much as we can assess outcomes as being positive. I don't think these two protesters are equal. There's somebody who is driving off a Mercedes and he will get bail money. He has a lawyer standby from mm -hmm. the organization ABCD mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is supporting his cause, which mm -hmm. may be good, which mm -hmm. may be good. Mm -hmm. But there's also this guy who is literally alone. Akishkwana police attacker industrial area remand because he has nobody. Mm -hmm. And there are many who are still there. Exactly. Yeah. And, and as you said, there's class there's classism or there's elitism in activism mm -hmm. and now we are seeing activism being it's like now a profession mm -hmm. and i f believe activism should be a process towards something mm -hmm. you can't activism is not an end in itself mm -hmm. it's like going for therapy you mm -hmm. can't go for therapy for the rest of your life mm -hmm. it has to be an exit point mm -hmm. activism is a process towards mm -hmm. social change, change yeah. but now we are glorifying activism to be and we've seen people taking i will not mention their names but you've seen people on the tv taking interviews dressing smartly as activists as mm -hmm. representatives mm -hmm. and let's call a spade a spade these people are being supported uh, and they are making a living from mm, it. From they are getting publicity at the very least. Mm. And I ask myself... And they are not on the front line. when. And when they are not... Exactly. And even if they are, they are not equal yeah. with the guy who is walking. What I do can, you think about that? I can tell you for sure, for sure. Mm. Uh, one, uh, when the people of Madare went to the streets, mm. Uh, something had happened uh, because there was a demolition that was happening in Madare. The, a lot of livelihoods, uh, a lot of people, people's investments, a lot of homes. There, uh, there's a mama, uh, an old shoshu that had been in her house for the last 45 years. And when the government was demolishing, they didn't care whether you've been there for the, for the last 44 four years. When the people of Madare went to the streets, it was genuinely from what they felt that you know the government has has pushed us to the to the limit. We call it the plastic limit. Yes, exactly. we, we can't move now anymore. We break after that. Yeah. We break after that. So <clears throat> talking from my side, I know uh, us we push for social change, and we know how we just hold on to to the next meal, it will, it's always the next, to the next meal, mm. the next uh, rent, the next, the next, the next school fees. Mm. You don't, people are, now it's close to lunchtime, then there's, there are people in Madare who don't even know what they'll have for lunch. Mm. But yeah. don't you think it's intentional where you are 
put in a situation you are in an eternal present yeah. where you are living not even day to day it's become like minute, minute to minute. minute yeah because you see there's a philosopher called Plato who said a non reflect he was actually quoting his mentor Socrates he said a non reflective life is not worth living you cannot reflect if you are living in a constant present mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you look at the current affairs of Kenya in the past three months which is a quarter of a year mm -hmm. we have been living like in a constant present mara ni mafuriko which leads to those demolitions Missions, yeah. after mafuriko maandamano know, yeah. after maandamano sijui kuna nini sasa mm -hmm. it's like this i don't know if it's by design or it's by coincidence it's like how how can you organize you are even a better uh, you're better vast in community organizing than i am you cannot be in a position to organize around social issues if you are living in that kind of chaos of he day to day to day to day when will you reflect and rebuild and plan and execute mm. yeah that's what i'm thinking i i'm wondering yeah it's uh i say i say sometimes that you know uh the mudaiga cannot survive without madare uh the, the workers politi come from the, there the workers come, come from, from there, there. Uh, all the security guards when you go through all those areas all of them come from madare one two the politics of this country especially the city mm. cannot survive without madare and kibra mm. so sometimes it's and now it's, we also have a growing community in island i hope my my prayer my why we push for social change in our communities that yes. we hope that you know the coming generations will be able to to live a life that is different from the life that our parents lived the life of our grandmothers live uh, we are all pushing for we say a, a better uh, society yes. uh, a, a more equal not super equal but a more equal that you know we can get an education uh, as and the basic needs and basic needs as, yeah. as 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 others because right now we become too dependent on others too dependent on politicians if you want to do a rally even today is a friday is a working day mm -hmm. now at noon if you drive to madari right now you want to do a rally you'll have a pop, you'll have a crowd mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. because these people have nothing else to do yes yeah the society the system has intentionally put them in a corner mm. that we can call you when you want and when you want drop, to use you when you want to use yeah. you and drop you after after that yeah and now maybe the final question as we close <clears throat> and i think this is critical because it can end up big uh, true in future if you are president of kenya for one term and i say one term because usually we have seen in such economies where there is a lot of uh, political instability people tend to want to stay in office forever mm -hmm. but if you were to be president for one term which is 5 years here what would you do to avert one what we've spoken about the unemployment crisis two high cost of living and three to impro improve family life what would you do wow. uh, after seeing what happened uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is not uh it's not a fancy job to be a president now yeah. it used to be but but after seeing all the pressure mm. uh but yeah uh i think speaking as somebody from from the hood uh, who understand both urban life and the village life yes. one uh looking at the circumstances if you look at what are pegged into the cost of living uh, we've been seeing people complaining about the cost of fuel mm. because a lot of things are pegged around the cost the of fuel, fuel. Yes. yeah so if there was a way of making sure that you know we don't know all of us we don't know our expiry date i might be doing the interview now and then the next thing yeah. if you pick up before the yeah, yeah. before the interview ends so i would want ways of uh, making the cost of fuel affordable what so, about removing it or rather removing dependency from it because we're in the tropics and somebody asked me the other day how come we're in the tropics and we have never explored solar yeah i know i i, I tried solar in the village i use solar in the village it's not super reliable yes. uh, but uh, if you look at the, the fuel the fuel levy. there are there's a lot of levies that have been put there mm. there are a lot of you know meaningless 
uh, additional costs that have been put there. Yes. You hear now they are trying to want to put toll station. They just it, they just some greedy. They it, it's a way of making money, mm. quick money. All of us, we wake up in the morning. The government they are sure they the people will fuel and make money. Yes. But they don't know now that's where the cost of living uh, is pegged. Yes. Uh, farms now. I am a farmer. Right now, the farm that I used to use, 2,000 to plow, mm. I, I use more than 5,000 to plow. Yes. So it's pegged into everything. And that's now touching in on the cost of living. And the cost of living. Yeah, you need more said shillings to do the same thing. Yes. So if you look at, you know, creating jobs, mm. uh, we've talked about uh, cutting more into blue the collar. white blue collar jobs. Yeah making people be dependent mm -hmm. uh that's one making agriculture making agriculture you know uh, a space where you know all of us have a village all of us have a farm mm -hmm. making people trying to make a living even out of the small uh spaces that we have yeah uh make agriculture lucrative make uh open spaces where people can even if i do my my sweet potatoes in the village there's mm. a market and i can make money out of it yes so and even there's a middleman economy where the person transporting will earn something, something from it exactly so we are kind of an agricultural uh country mm. but if you look at what comes from agriculture all of us are looking for the white collar jobs mm. if we could make create technologies that makes you even if you have a small space this you can maximize out of it yes then you'll see a lot of young people getting into into agriculture mm. uh we've been talking we've seen uh, exporting uh people to go work abroad yes uh, uh let's not what just they export. used to call brain drain yeah, yeah. tax waiver yeah. for companies to come and and settle here yeah. if you look at rwanda yeah. there are specific companies tech companies you know they are tax waivers because yes. they're sure when they come here they employ a lot of people yes yeah so those are the some of the things that we're not looking at okay. how do we attract more you know companies to more invest in here invest in here once yeah. they invest here we will not just even if we don't tax them, we'll tax our people who are working within those. And those, the those people will also be productive because they are they are employing our people who are also producing. Producing, yeah. yeah. But if you look at the cost of doing business here, first of all, the channel. Mm. Oh, lazima ujue nani, lazima wakina nani wakule kwanza. Mm. It's 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 it is crazy. Yeah. And then uh, we have this thing called. Um, uh, uh, by, uh, bureaucracy. Yes. There's a lot of bureaucracy. Even if you want to create a company, set a company here, the number of years, the number of things that are needed from you, you just get discouraged. That's yeah. why we've seen a lot of companies moving to Rwanda, moving to Tanzania, because mm. it's more friendly. Yes. If we create a more friendly uh, business uh, 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 space, then we'll see more see coming. Father had seven wives. Okay. So uh, I have so many cousins. I work every day trying to see how my cousins can be employed. Not even here. Trying to create space for my cousins. And it makes me grounded to be an employer. So for all those young people, uh, it's very nice to be employed. Mm. But it's even extremely nice to be an employer. employer because yeah. you, you have create flexibility. more value. It becomes a cycle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So let's not work towards being employed. Yes. Uh, we all have God-given talent. Sometimes we just sleep on those talents and we go explore those talents in people's companies. Yeah. So advise them that Things have changed. Uh, technology has changed so much, so much. Work on ways how you can be an employer. Mheshimiwa Bilian Ojiwa, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks thank for, you for having your time. me. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Cynthia from Momo Arts, a film, music and arts production company. Every year we run a monologue challenge competition and we will soon be calling out actors to apply. Whether you're a pro or starting out, this is your chance. Stay tuned.